I'm gonna give you our top three favorite squat variations for the Olympic lifts, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you wanna become an explosive freak, you wanna get better at the Olympic lifts, but you also want to be a better athlete, you wanna get stronger, make sure you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so that we can help you become a champion. So in the sport of Olympic weightlifting, we know that back squats and front squats have a huge carryover to the Olympic lifts. We know that if we can increase that back squat, the snatch is gonna go up. We know if we can increase that front squat, your jerk is going to improve. If the front squat also improves, we're probably gonna see that in the clean catch as well, that improvement in the clean catch. If your back squat improves, your pulling strength is gonna shoot up dramatically. And these are, this is absolute 100% fact in the realm of Olympic weightlifting, but oftentimes, Coaches get stagnant with what exercises they're gonna to utilize to increase that leg strength. Coaches forget that they can get a little bit more creative, they can get creative and create other movements in the squat world that will carry over tremendously to those Olympic lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk. And what we've done is we've picked our top three squat variations and we're gonna start with that third place squat movement right away and what we like to refer to as the Morris Tempo Back Squat. So we stole the Morris Tempo Back Squat right from Harrison Morris. Some people refer to this as the Unbroken Back Squat. I like to refer to this as the Morris Tempo. I've been fortunate enough to be around Harrison at multiple different World Championships, Pan American Championships, and to see him train very regularly. And one of the things that he does that I've always really enjoyed watching is how he approaches his back squats. He'll walk the bar out of the rack and he'll hit one, two, three reps in an unbroken tempo. He's got a very upright torso. He's very rigid. He's very tight out of the bottom position and he holds excellent positions and excellent mechanics to increase his squat. And what we've done is we've taken that Morris tempo, as an unbroken tempo, and we like to utilize that in our own movements now. So if we see that an individual is struggling to have speed in their squats, they're struggling to hold their posture out of the hole, they're struggling to stay rigid, we like to utilize that Morris Temple to try and increase and enhance their rigidness while they're squatting, and that's gonna carry over tremendously to the Olympic lifts. That second exercise that we like to use regarding squats is the pause squat. So I like to utilize the pause squats in the back squat and in the front squat. And if we can think about it, it's not just pausing where you're gonna get into the bottom of the hole and deflate. We wanna get down into the bottom of the hole. We wanna stay as tight as possible in our trunk. We wanna stay as tight as possible in our upper back. We wanna feel our feet applying a ton of pressure. And what this pause does is it can actually improve mobility for a lot of athletes. It can also improve that dynamic trunk control. So we're gonna see with these pause squats, we're gonna see mobility improve and stability improve. And that's gonna carry over to the dip and the jerk. It's also gonna carry over to a lot of short-limbed weightlifters. So short-legged weightlifters tend to have a little bit more of a struggle when they're pulling. Their, their pulls off the floor aren't as strong but they tend to be very good squatters. So when you utilize that pause squat, you're actually gonna notice that all of a sudden, the short-legged lifters are going to be a little bit stronger as they pull off the floor. And we've seen this with our own athlete, Kate Ware. She's a junior 59K weightlifter that has snatched over 86 kilos. And what we've seen with her is we've seen her start position improve dramatically from utilizing these pause back squats. We like to keep the pause squat reps anywhere from singles all the way up to sets of four if we're really trying to improve mobility. That number one squat variation that we like to utilize for Olympic lifts is the double bounce squat. And so we actually like to utilize double bounces for front squats and for back squats. And there's multiple different reasons why we like to utilize these. One, we see a huge carryover to that dynamic start position. So if we have someone executing a double bounce, that's gonna help them learn how to utilize that stretch shortening cycle when they are doing the dynamic start. On top of that, if we're using it for front squats, 
a lot of weightlifters will catch a clean and they'll hit a double bounce and they get out of the hole. The reason why this happens is the weight might be a little bit forward and when they hit that second bounce, now they're in a much better position. Now that stretch shortening cycle helps to stimulate more high threshold motor unit recruitment. They're gonna have a better trunk position out of the hole and now their body is actually forcing them to recruit more and to utilize their muscle more effectively. So what we like to do with the double bounces is we actually like to utilize these in training to try and train that aspect. On top of this, this is a movement that if you're utilizing for back squats or for front squats, you will get incredibly strong. It's very similar to doing a one and a quarter rep with dumbbell benches or with flat bench. Double bounce squats are very, very effective at blowing up leg strength. And I've even seen with double bounce front squats having a huge correlation to the dip and the jerk because now when you're at the bottom of the jerk, your body, your trunk is more stable on that little dip and it can handle that load without getting pulled forward. We actually got these directly from Norik Vardanian. His dad, Yuri Vardanian, was known for doing double bounces in his training. And when he clean and jerked over 220 kilos at 80 kilos, at 80 and a half kilos, he, or 82 and a half kilos, he was able to hit that double bounce position and then smash that jerk. So we've taken these directly from Norik Vardanian and over the last decade, we've implemented this in a lot of our sports performance and in a lot of our Olympic weightlifting. So try these exercises out in your training program. If you have struggle implementing them, you can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up a program today to help you with your Olympic weightlifting goals. If you want more information about Olympic weightlifting, click on this video right here. Until next time, guys, peace.